Good evening. My name is Sandra Craig, and I represent the Etiquette Foundation of Illinois. You are watching a live interactive call-in television program brought to you on CAN-TV 21. Let's talk etiquette. During the next 25 minutes, my topic of discussion will be Christian civility, the social behavior of a Christian. My very special co-host is none other than that fantastic, domineering Mr. Nathan Wright. Wow, what an introduction. Thank you so much. I am so pleased to be back with you for this season. And as you well know, we're going to be very entertaining. <laughs> yes, as <laughs> usual. <laughs> right. Okay, callers, I would like to invite you to call in with your questions at area code 312-738-1060. Again, 312-738-1060. Our phone lines are now open. Okay, Mr. Wow. Wright, isn't yes. it a pl it's a pleasure to be it back here is, with you. It is, and they have a, a new sidewalk outside. Did you uh, notice yes, that? I did notice I that. Really I did surprised. notice that. See what a little vacation does? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Changes I, take place, it right? It does, it does. Okay, now, our, our topic of discussion today, uh, Mr. Wright, is Christian civility. Yes. The social behavior of a Christian. Now, Mr. Wright, can you please give us some history of civility and Christianity? Oh, absolutely. Combine them for absolutely. us, please, if you will. Absolutely. As you well know, this country was founded on Christian values. And it goes back to the very beginning. We are a Christian nation in terms of our values. And etiquette is part of those values. And so Christian civility is where we really are. And we would love for Christians, practicing Christians and non-practicing Christians, to begin to practice Christian civility. It's going to make you an entirely new person. It's going to give them a whole new consciousness. And when you look at the history of this country, you're right on time with your value system. It is what we are. We are a Christian society. Yes, yes, I agree. Now, Mr. Wright, um, in your statement that I read, it says, um, Christian civility is a social and religious philosophy that combines Christianity and civility as one exemplary behavioral adaption to Christian life. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that statement? Yes, well, if you think about what we do every day, whether we are a practicing Christian or not, our behavior is really rooted in our values. And because Christianity has had such an influence, an amazing influence, on this entire nation in terms of those values. I mean, our court system is based on Christian values. Uh, our political system is based on Christian values. And the, what does the president say? God bless America. And he's not talking about it from a Muslim point of view, I'm sure. He's talking about it from those historical values that we have as a Christian nation. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to practice Christianity to be a, 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 a person who practices civility. But the two, if you are a practicing Christian, we're encouraging Christians to bring back those values and make the connection between that history and this culture. So Christian civility should be the next great evolution for the, for Christian, for the Christian movement. Yes, I agree. I agree, Mr. Wright. I believe we have a caller. Caller, you're on the air. Good evening, Mr. Wright, and to your guest host as well. Mr. Wright, I understand when you talk about in terms of the faith-based organizations and other um, firms and all that, and a lot of them are don't want to be bothered with these youth of the day. And it's a new term that they refer to as these, these youth where they can't really teach them nothing now. And the new term is inner cities throwaways. Mm. Where they don't want to be bothered with them, and it uh, like for example, uh, when some of these youths get into trouble, where they pull do so many hours of community uh, uh, work, a lot of those organizations don't want to be bothered with them because they don't, they can't trust them. They worry about them committing some type of crime on their premises. 
Well, so this how is are like... we supposed to deal? I mean, if the faith-based places and other places is turning their back to them, and, now, and I'm serious, the new term they use for them is inner cities throwaways. Well, the subject today is uh, not exactly on that particular topic. Uh, we're, we're talking about Christian civility, and uh, even the young people who aren't practicing Christians do practice a degree of Christian civility. Uh, they may simply call it etiquette, or they may simply call it, this is just who I am and this is how I behave. But the influences of that behavior is really rooted in etiquette and in civility. And because this is a Christian nation, we really, you really can't get around the history of this country. I mean, you know, it's just that simple. And so we're encouraging those who, whether they are practicing Christians or practicing Muslims, uh, to adhere to those basic rules of behavior that are rooted in Christian history and Christian culture and Christian philosophy. And so we're encouraging you, of course, you are, whether you are practicing Christian or not, you have been influenced by Christianity like I have been influenced by Christianity. And so please share this new, this new idea, this new thought with your friends, and it's called Christian civility. Let's bring those two together and see if we can improve behavior in this society. That's what this is all about. Yes, I agree. And I'd like to add something to that, Mr. Wright. If we as just natural human beings would be considerate one to another, whether we're practicing Christians or not, we would see a better overall society. Yes. And even concerning the, the young men that she was talking or he was talking about, the throwaways, um, mm -hmm. that, that's the sad case and that's the sad reality that we are throwing away our young people and everybody can play a part in bringing civility back to them and to this city by adopting one young man, one young woman yes. to spend time with. Not They don't have to move into your home, but to spend time with at least two to three times a week, just instilling in them values, morals, yes. Yes. Uh, ethics, showing them proper behavior. Yes. If we would, if everybody would vow to just do that yes. for one young man, one for young woman on your block, yes. in your neighborhood, in your family, yes. we would see a difference. I, I, I thank you that even though you mentioned that question, mm -hmm. that wasn't directly related to us. But again, I'm glad you did because sure. we do need to bring that point out. We do need to go out in full force to help our youth get turned around. Absolutely, absolutely. And civility plays a big part in that. Huge part, absolutely. Huge part. And whether you're a practicing Christian or not, uh, that advice is strongly encouraged. We want you to go out there and identify those young people who need your help. And you can be such a tremendous influence on them in getting them not to be labeled throwaways, but to be labeled productive citizens of this city and of this nation. Absolutely. Because no one, man, woman, boy or girl, is worthy of being thrown away. Oh, it'd be we must, entitled to that. We must reach back and reach and teach and touch everyone that we possibly can. No Absolutely. one, we should allow no one to be uh, gone without being touched or being embraced by yes. someone coming to them and showing them humanity. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. our human duty. Yes, yes. I so believe, well said. <laughs> thank you. I believe we have a caller on the air. Yes, good evening. Good evening. Uh, it's so wonderful to see you. I love the hair and love the tie. <laughs> I just wanted to comment uh, briefly. I'm glad to see that you all are back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and I wanted you, to Brother comment on your, on your subject matter today. I believe any any spiritual text should have, have one main underlining principle, and that is basically do unto others as you will have them do unto you, Re yes. regardless of how it may be written or stated. But that is basically the, the whole foundation, yes. and that yes. ties in with with etiquette. Well, I just wanted to leave that comment. I'm so glad. Thank to you. See thank you. You all travel in peace. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you. That was our member, Brother King. Yes. Yes. And it's yes. great to hear from him. Absolutely. And, and 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 that's true. We should do unto others as we would have them do unto us. Now, if we would just remember that rule to yes. treat everyone as we want to be tr treated, Absolutely. with respect. Yes. Practicing courtesy. I heard a, a, t a TV show the other day, uh, and the man's topic of discussion was just about being courteous. Mm. 
mm. which is a very big part of being civil Absolutely. and civility. Absolutely. We need to return to that. Absolutely. Uh, now, Mr. Wright, you stated that Christian civility is a so social and moral construct that sets forth the social rules for living a Christian life. What are some of the rules that we as people should follow in order to bring civility back yes. for those that are Christians and non-Christians yes. alike? Well, it starts with really respect. And, uh, but even with respect, you have to first learn to respect yourself. And I say learn because some of us really don't respect ourselves. So it's very, very difficult to respect others if you don't respect yourself. That's true. And so that's the first rule. And then you need to learn, you need to actual, actually study the rules of etiquette so that your civility will be at its highest level. Your courtesy, your politeness, your co consideration for others is really key and central to the whole practice of Christian civility or uh, just regular civility without having the Christian co context to it. And so, I, yeah, I would say uh, you need to start with respect and self-respect is the beginning of that. Yes, mm -hmm. self-respect, yes. yes. Because when you respect yourself, uh, Mr. Wright, there are some things you just won't do and say. <laughs> you won't do it and say. It's just you automatic. won't participate. You will not. You, you will, will not, not participate. Not. And with, and with self-respect comes self-esteem. Yes. And with self-esteem comes self-worth. So now you know you have worth, self-worth. And that's it. That's the real basis of self-respect. And therefore, you want to share that faith in yourself and that belief in yourself by sharing it with others, by demonstrating to them that you have the capacity to be respectful towards them. In yeah. any way you can do that. That's, right. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I think I shared with you what happened to me the other day in the oh, store. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, and um, I try to remember, just as you stated that, every moment is a teachable moment. Yes. It's just, what will you teach? And so I had an opportunity to, to teach, do to do some teaching, <laughs> and I chose to teach to be civil, yes. <laughs> civility, <laughs> proper behavior. Yes. And I, I, I could have taken another way, um, another approach based on what happened, yes. but I decided to make it a teachable moment. See, sometimes we don't have to always respond in the same manner in which we were approached. That's so true. Uh, and when you do that, you give the other person an opportunity to think about themselves, to think about what they said mm -hmm. and their behavior. Yes. And you leave a little lighter because you didn't get all out of pocket and all yes, upset. Yes, that's, so, that's yes, true. I, that's I think true. if more of us would practice and it takes a little discipline, you know, yes. to do it. But self-control, self-control. But, but that's what etiquette is. That's what discipline, self-control. And we, we, we as as human beings, we do want to react. I mean, it's just natural for you to react, yes. react in a certain way. The way you receive something is usually the way you react towards it. Yes. And the, the key to great civility or great etiquette is to maintain self control. Yes. And that means the expression on your face, that means your eyes, that yes. means every little thing you do. And you do have to select what you say and how you respond to something but that's the mastery of what we are talking about and once you learn that self-control then you are in control of that situation you're not allowing someone else to control you right and when you respond negatively because you have been approached in a negative manner then what you've done is you've allowed that other person to control you and your response to what they said or did. Absolutely. I refuse to do that. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. I do believe we have a caller. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, yes, good evening and welcome evening. back, guys. It's Thank good you. to Thank see you. you back again. Thank you. Uh, listening to that caller at the beginning of the show, doorways and, and stuff, am I surprised about hearing things like that? No. No, I'm not because it seems like people such as that didn't have value seem like at the beginning. I mean, right. I, I mean, when 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 I was young, we was young. We had to go to church, and uh, right. if you didn't go to church, you did not uh, <laughs> do anything else that Sunday. You ain't don't talk about going to no Riverview 
or going somewhere, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> but it got to a point, it was a routine, and, and eventually it, it became very rewarding because, see, you get a chance to sit at the table, and, and even kids, and you, you, you hear the adults talking and, and stuff like that. Those values are very important to the value of a family to me. And, and I'm, I, I still believe in those kind of things. I, I, I just couldn't imagine me sitting up and saying, well, we don't give a heck about these kids. Throw them away. They ain't going to do nothing. But am I surprised? That same caller don't believe in being the brother's keeper. Uh, do you think that, you know, programs such as um, recovery homes and stuff like that is, is senseless? Let me tell you something. A, a, a group of people that don't try to do anything is a group of people don't want anything. You got to have a dream. You got to have something. Besides, you don't have to be no Christian. You could be anything you want, but one thing for sure, we are human beings, and we need to learn to respect human beings. We need to try to help um, human beings because if we keep on going the way that things are going right now, uh, let me tell you, it's going to be a sad it's already a sad situation, yes, it is. and yes, only it thing is. they could do is just get better. So, I think we need to try to believe in anything. Just as you say, help someone on the block. You know, instead of downing people, we need yes. to just try to help. You know, uh, sometimes sure you're gonna run into people that you know is uh, kind of halfway going another way, but. I'm a type of person, if you believe, you keep on saying just hello, how you doing? Eventually, that person going to see you and he's going to say, hey, how you doing? You know, so it's something that we got to be redundant in. We just got to keep on doing things if we want things better. But if Absolutely. not, listen, you think the kids are unfit. Well, pretty soon, Joe, they're going to be saying adults are throwaways. Mm -hmm. So right. somewhere along <laughs> the line, we just got to get back in order. Yeah. And uh, it'll be a better place. Do it happen overnight? Nope. But one thing for sure, it got to start somewhere. Absolutely. But listen, again, I'm glad to see y'all back glad again. Uh, let me get out there so I can hear your response. Yes. And uh, thank you for taking the call. Thank you. Thank you for the call. Yeah, absolutely. Great caller. Glad he called in today. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, I do believe we are, uh, have another call. Oh, okay. Caller, you're on the air. I just had to say this. I I see a different perspective. I'm around people that deal with high-risk youth. And I want to make myself perfectly clear. I think, I'm talking about even my family members, they need to get out of the type of work because you're not there to help these children and to, to, to deal with their problem. And people sit around saying, you know what, I can make money off of other people's misery. And I think that, and their heart is not in the right type of place. If you're not there and you went to school, you, uh, you, certain types of occupation, it's a calling. And you don't have that type of calling. You don't have a type of help. I mean, want to help children, not decide because of a paycheck. You know, we got people out here that are making money off of other people's misery. And I ain't saying that. I'm not agreeing about throwing people away with us. Sometimes it doesn't matter just spend a few little bucks. And it may help a person. But we got people out here want want to throw the money in the other direction where people can make money. We got these different types of uh, program directors. They drive these uh, Escalades and stuff, and they making money off of it. Yes, and you yes. got people that don't want you to do nothing to stop them from making their money. Well, you know, I, I appreciate uh, your call and your sentiments uh, personally, uh, Sandra. Um, you know, but I think if we could ask those who are listening to our show mm -hmm. to just take an hour a day. And I know you have to disconnect from your shows and your programs and the things that you know, the, the media t tends to captivate you and you spend a lot of time that you could be doing something else. But I think if you just call and find out, you know, those pro about those programs, that people out here need your help. Mm -hmm. And rather than sitting and watching TV for two hours, go down to the where they're passing out food or pantry or whatever in your community and talk to those people. They, they want you there. They love to share with you some of the things that, that is going on in their life. And you can make their day a much better day. Just give them some encouragement. And so disconnect from the media for about two hours, once a week maybe. And if we did that, because we do have the time 
it's not like we're all working like slaves. We do have the time and we can contribute. I do it, you do it. Yes. And so this is what we need to do as a community. We need to get involved and stop sitting around uh, just glued to the television set every day. And so I would encourage that caller to actually get out there. Right. I, I agree. <coughs> and I was just reminded of one um, radio host. I like the slogan he says when he comes on the air. I won't mention who he is, but the slogan is, he said, it's time to gang up on the problem and not each other. Right, and right. so that's that's what we need to do. We know we have a problem. We know we need to bring civility back. We know mm -hmm. we need to start having more self-respect for ourselves and for others. We know we need to reach out to our youth. Mm -hmm. We know there's somebody that we could reach and help and who would be glad to receive it. So let's stop ganging up on each other and ganging up on who's not doing this or who's right. saying that right. and make up in our minds that that same energy that we're sending out that way, mm -hmm. we're going to take it and adapt someone and bring them into our presence and, and give them the benefit of our wisdom. I mean, mm -hmm. we we have lived uh, some time on this earth yes. and uh, there are people that are far younger than ourselves that could benefit from our wisdom, mm -hmm. from our knowledge, from mm -hmm. our experiences. Yes. You mm -hmm. know, and, and if we would tell them and mm -hmm. help them, there are some mountains and some valleys they would not have to fall into because they would have new information. Yes. New information gives them an opportunity to make different choices. Absolutely. And absolutely. we as elders need to be doing that absolutely. we as human beings need to be doing that absolutely. absolutely how can i say that i am a etiquette ambassador and i'm not willing to share display mm -hmm. those skills with someone else mm -hmm. someone that doesn't have them absolutely. how could i say that i'm a human being and, and a mother and a grandmother mm -hmm. and not help some some child it's about being proactive and, and you are you have and you i ask that, that and I ask that the audience examine yourselves today and think about what is it, honestly, what is it that you could do to contribute to a better neighborhood, a better block, a better young man, a young woman in your, in your neighborhood or in your family, mm -hmm. and then do something about it. Do something. Doing is the key. You have to. Get it's an up action and do it. word. <laughs> it's an action word. Absolutely. Not not Absolutely. not ganging up on saying all these negative things about our young people, mm -hmm. or ganging up and saying negative things about people that are not doing anything. See, mm -hmm. I believe in saying what I'm doing before I reach and say something about something someone else isn't doing. Yes. I just I just want you to think about that. Oh, absolutely. Well, well said. And this is why we're taking on this subject today. This is a subject about this, this nation is predominantly a Christian society, a Christian nation. And there are millions of Christians all over the world. And we should not have the kinds of problems that we're having because we know that they are solvable. And we have to step up and take responsibility and do something about the problem rather than crying about them or complaining about them. And yes, we can do that. So this is why we want Christians to reconnect with their civility. This is part of your birthright. This is a part of your faith. And reconnect those two words, Christian and civility. And it's also part of our calling yes, as yes. human beings. Absolutely, absolutely. I think it's a call, is it? No callers. Okay. okay. All right. But I, 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 I think that um, I think that that's really important that we would, because there's so much time wasted ganging up on on each other instead yes. of ganging up on the problem. And everybody can see the problem. We can see the problem. We get it every day on the, on the media. Yes, uh, yes. You were mentioning to me about the shootings uh, this past weekend yes. over the holidays, rather. And uh, it's so sad that this is what in our daily uh, press every day. We hearing about how many people were shot or injured. And so it is an extremely sad, sad situation because it doesn't have to be that way. If we mm -hmm. would get in there and do our part. Absolutely. Okay, Mr. Wright, uh, it looks oh. like our show is just oh, about wow. over. That I don't know quick. what happened to the it's time, but, <laughs> but again, I want to thank you for being my co-host. Uh, it was a pleasure to be 
here next to you once again. Yes. And yes. to our audience, our callers, I thank you for tuning in to Let's Talk Etiquette. I thank you for uh, sharing with your neighbors. I'm asking you to do that about calling in and watching the show and participating in their neighborhoods to help our youth. I think mm -hmm. it is a pleasure to be back here with you. I'll be back next week with the second part of this topic. I'll be here. I hope that you will. Have a safe weekend. God bless you. Talk to you next week.